This video is sponsored by CuriosityStream. In the 1910s, railroad baron and real estate developer Henry Flagler wanted to promote his newest city, Miami, to northerners wary of the humid, malarial swamps of South Florida. He asked a writer, E.V. Blackman, to write a hype piece in the magazine East Coast Home Seeker. Blackman called Miami the Magic City, and the nickname stuck. Since then, people have called Miami the Magic City because of how much it would change from one year to the next. Miami has over 300 high-rises, one of the tallest skylines of any city, and it continues to grow. Miami may once again earn the Magic City nickname if it accomplishes what its mayor, Francis Suarez, hopes it can. He's pushing to make the city of Miami the new Silicon Valley, and some tech leaders and venture capitalists are listening. Mayor Suarez is promising low taxes, lax COVID restrictions, and a young, educated workforce. He's been tweeting with Elon Musk about building a boring company tunnel system, as ill-advised as that is. Basically, there's a lot of hype around Miami right now, and some people think that the center of gravity in the tech world could shift from Northern California to South Florida. But is it actually possible? Could Miami be the leader in tech in the United States in 10 or 20 years, or maybe even a secondary hub? We'll answer those questions after the bike bell. I'm gonna say this right away. It's gonna be difficult for any city to dethrone Silicon Valley. Silicon Valley is what's known as an industry cluster, a potent mix of companies, investors, and institutional partners, all centered in one region. There's some notable industry clusters out there, the kind where all you have to do is say the name of the city and the industry comes to mind. For example, when I say Wall Street, you think finance. And if I say Hollywood, you think film and television. If I say Washington, D.C., you think government. And if I say Detroit, you think cars. Detroit is probably the only industry cluster in the United States to rival Silicon Valley, which may be the strongest industry cluster ever. Will we ever say Miami and think tech instead of the beach? Well, Miami has a lot of catching up to do, that's for sure. To understand how strong of an industry cluster Silicon Valley is, we need to take a brief look at the history of the area. Why did a cluster spring up in the Santa Clara Valley? And is there anything Miami can learn from the past? For many people, Silicon Valley is synonymous with the internet, e-commerce, and social media, and entered the public consciousness in the 1990s. Think Yahoo, founded in 1994, or eBay, founded as AuctionWeb in 1995 or the infamous Pets.com, which was founded in 1998 and folded in 2000. Not even a cute sock puppet could save it. But Silicon Valley's origins go back much farther. It's tough to pick one date as the starting point. A common one is the founding of Hewlett Packard in Apollo Alto Garage in 1939. But I want to start at the inflection point in 1951, when Frederick Terman, the dean of Stanford University's School of Engineering, convinced Stanford and Palo Alto to found the Stanford Research Park an industrial park dedicated to growing high-technology firms. Stanford Research Park's 700 acres currently host offices for companies like HP, Tesla, and Lockheed Martin. Facebook once had its offices at the park. So by the early 1950s, the Valley had a university and office space for supporting tech companies. But sometimes you need a little bit of luck. And the Valley did catch a lucky break in 1956 when William Shockley, the co-inventor of the transistor, moved to Palo Alto to take care of his ailing mother. He founded Shockley Semiconductor, one of the oldest silicon chip producers in the nation. In the years that followed, other companies and research institutes like Xerox Park and Fairchild Semiconductor set up shop in the region. The Federal Research Center, the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory, was founded in 1952 and brought thousands of scientists to the area. The economic growth of a city outpaces population growth because of the advantages of having customers, clients, firms, and investors all in one place. It comes down to transportation cost savings. It's just more efficient to do business with someone in the same city than it is with someone across the world. This remains true even in the era of the internet. Industry clusters are a form of specialized agglomeration effect. The concept of transportation cost savings includes the transportation of ideas and labor in the cluster. Basically, even with ever-present social media, people still spread ideas face-to-face -face through in-person social networks. This idea and knowledge spreading makes those who work in the cluster better at what they do, and they can improve on ideas, making the cluster more competitive in the global marketplace. One key idea that Silicon Valley really nurtured was the concept of investors trading money for equity in early stage companies, what we now call venture capital. The large sums of money available to founders draws entrepreneurs from all over the world right to Silicon Valley. It's a huge advantage. 
Now, I want to talk about one last advantage, the culture of entrepreneurship and spinoffs. Spinoffs are companies founded by the employees of other companies in the same field. It is not entirely clear why, but Silicon Valley has historically seen exceptionally high spinoff activity, only rivaled by Detroit, the other mega industry cluster in the United States. Most major Valley firms, including Apple, Google, Facebook, Cisco, eBay, and Twitter, companies worth over $2 trillion can be linked back to one semiconductor company founded in 1957. That firm, Fairchild Semiconductor Corporation, was a leader in developing integrated silicon circuits. Moore's Law, the observation that the number of transistors on an integrated circuit doubles every two years, was hypothesized by Gordon Moore, at the time a co-founder of Fairchild. It seems that every time Fairchild had a new innovation, several employees would leave and start their own companies. From the dozens of Fairchildren, as Fairchild spinoffs were called, and other spinoffs for generations of firms. You can link most of today's social media companies in some way to the semiconductor companies of the 50s and 60s. The Fairchild family tree is really quite impressive. Why did spinoffs take off here and not elsewhere? Why not say in Dallas at Texas Instruments instead of Fairchild in Silicon Valley? Texas Instruments was founded in 1951 and produced the first commercial silicon transistor in 1954. In the 50s and 60s, it was a bigger company with more market share than Fairchild. Why didn't it generate the same number of spinoffs? It's hard to know for sure, but one reason may be because the state of California doesn't enforce employee non-compete covenants. This encourages employee knowledge spillover, as the economists say, which can further accelerate the formation and dominance of an industry cluster. Okay, we've gone deep into the reasons why Silicon Valley is Silicon Valley. The key takeaway here is that the cluster didn't just spring up in the 1990s, but has been around for 70, 80, 130 years, depending on when you think it got its start. That's a long time to reap the benefits of agglomeration effects and become a true tech company producing machine. But what about Miami? Couldn't they just follow the same playbook, but faster, now that they know what it takes? Yes, they could, but now everybody else has that same playbook. It seems like every city is trying to create their own tech industry cluster. You've got the Silicon Forest in Seattle with Amazon and Microsoft and Silicon Alley in New York. There are some lesser known ones too, like Silicon Bog in Limerick and Silicon Kashba in Istanbul. Miami isn't really competing with Silicon Valley, it's competing with every other city to lure venture capital firms and founders away or to generate them locally faster than anyone else. Miami is even behind the Soviet Union. Khrushchev visited the valley in the 1950s and was impressed by the cluster and decided to build his own city of science in Siberia to replicate the California example. It didn't go well and not just because of climate differences. In general, researchers don't believe that any straightforward attempt to replicate Silicon Valley makes much sense. The valley just has a decades long head start. Cities, states, and countries that have tried to do this have largely been met with failure. And the ones that have had some success have done so thanks to the fundamentals of their economy, not any sort of public policy effort. If Miami or any other city wants to develop their own industry cluster, it's best to employ some regional realism. What is the city good at already? What skills does the labor force have? What gives the city its unique culture? Cities can then use policy to enhance those built-in advantages and foster a cluster. For example, the Swiss have been famous for their watchmaking for centuries, and today the federal and canton governments incentivize and encourage watchmaking firms and related industries. They had a historical advantage and skill set and are optimizing it. They aren't trying to be the next Silicon Valley, but the Silicon Valley of watches. Silicon Valley and other wannabe tech regions already have a head start, but Miami could be on the ground floor of something entirely new and different. Their Fairchild Semiconductor could have already been founded. It's up to Miami to find it and nurture that new cluster. Silicon Valley is the ultimate industry cluster, unlikely to be toppled anytime soon. But what about that other ultimate industry cluster, Detroit? We've all seen images of the shuttered factories and depopulated neighborhoods. A discussion of Detroit's cluster trajectory didn't fit into the main video, but I talk about it for a couple minutes over on Nebula. Nebula is where I post little pieces of bonus content like that. Stuff that doesn't fit in the main video or something I just want to give some additional commentary on. That all replaces this ad because there are actually no ads on Nebula. It's also home to lots of great original videos, including a very good trivia show presented by Sam from Wendover. It's a game show that I was actually a contestant on. If you sign up for Nebula, you can see if I win big or not. Nebula is great and it's made even better thanks to our partnership with CuriosityStream. 
CuriosityStream is the source for high quality, engaging documentaries. It's easy to find a documentary on just about anything, including Silicon Valley. They have a great series called Triumph of the Nerds that chronicles the history of Silicon Valley in greater detail than I did in this video. It has interviews with Steve Wozniak, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, and more. Signing up is a great way of supporting this channel as well as the dozens of other creators working to make Nebula a success. It's overall just a really good deal too. So go click on the link in the description and get 26% off.